So I got to thinking the other day about all the unimplemented content and mechanics across all of Don't Starve history and just the potential potential behind it all. I also thought to myself that, likely, many of you have never seen any of this before and figured that I should just probably get to fixing that. So now, there's going to be a lot, and I mean a lot that we're going to cover, and it's still not going to be enough. So, I'm going to leave links below for you to see it for yourself if you wish. For now though, let's get wet. No, seriously. Because for whatever reason, the bulk of these unused features will be coming from Don't Starve Shipwrecked, like the seaweed monster here. Commonly referred to now as Kelpie, we can only guess that it was to be a mob that occasionally spawned via players harvesting seaweed out there on the high seas. We can't ever know that for sure. However, we do know that Kelpie actually lives on. At least within Don't Starve Together, that is, when you're playing the insanely large mod, The Creeps in the Deeps. So, check it out for yourself. But for the sake of not just horsing around with missing shipwreck content alone for a little bit, I will be bouncing between the Don't Starve experiences as much as I can. Like with the Zebs here. A Zeb was meant to be included within the Hamlet DLC. And yes, it should look very familiar regardless of it still not being in the game. Cause yes, Zebs were going to be the fleshy equivalents of Clockwork Knights. Just like how Hippopotamus are the fleshy versions of Clockwork Rooks. Very cool. And darn near a real thing to boot. As it has examinations from all survivors, unique sounds in the game still, a herd mechanic, and... And more. Interesting. Very interesting. From Shipwrecked to Hamlet to even Don't Starve Together now, folks. As yes, this little guy, called a Slip, was apparently going to be an unimplemented mob that was going to be added many, many moons ago. But it goes even further than that. For you see, from Slip to Slip Stir. This mob was likely to be a red herring of sorts in that it would start out small and neutral, however it would eventually grow into what we can see here. Heck, it even goes deeper still, as a user by the name of Raphael discovered the intact files of this creature that supposedly still had animations and everything to boot. Neato. But what do you think, folks? Would it really have fit the style of the game, or not so much? But I don't think we can ask that question here, at least in my personal opinion, as I believe that these could have worked. Additional clockwork boats. Now, we can also see a diving helmet, an encrusted boat, and some sort of spiky mine of some description. And while the encrusted boat did in fact make it to the game later on in its life cycle, the others did not. In a bit of a callback, however, the diving helmet is very prominent in the Creeps of the Deeps mod. But what could that mine have been, I wonder? But I also wonder why they chose to abandon the other clockwork boats in favor of only floaty boaty knights. I mean, I get the fact that knights are ranged now too, so a bishop boat is definitely questionable. But having to dodge rook boats would have really spiced things up out there on the high seas. But let me know how you feel about this one. Now let us snap back to Hamlet for a moment, folks, to discuss this abomination here, the Snapdragon. As said, it is or was supposed to be an unimplemented Hamlet mob that was meant to seemingly be neutral to players unless provoked, and would, apparently, walk around occasionally spawning flowers in its wake. Now, whether or not those flowers would have been interactable is still in question. But perhaps this thing would have finally stopped folk from being anti-flower-picking elitists for once. But nah, jokes aside, while it sounds like it was still in its very early stages of development, all the characters actually already had examinations for it. So it was probably pretty close to being a thing, folks. Cool stuff. Now, this next segment is interesting. 
Mostly due to the fact that what we are apparently seeing before us is a tree guardian of some sort, and that to me is just too darn strange. Now I could very well see a very simple mislabel being a thing, as thinking that this is an early concept of a Yarktopus or something would make far more sense given what we're seeing, that or maybe just something entirely different in general, but whatever the case, it also appears as if they were going to go the birch nut route too with it, which is just interesting all around. I have no idea what this thing is, but I kind of want to. But ah, that's better, folks. Mangrove tree guardians. Quite frankly, mangrove trees in Shipwrecked are pretty darn useless. However, if they were to make them transplantable or even drop something else of importance, I would have absolutely welcomed these things here. They look huge, too, and I may even be more inclined to actually enjoy the looks of the sketches more over the quote-unquote finished design that we can see. But more tree guardians, you ask? I think plenty of folk would sign up for that. Ever heard of sowing seeds for the future? Well, Clay has. As six to seven or eight years ago at this point, I don't know anymore, 2020 is just a black hole, they were looking to add shopkeepers to Solo Don't Starve. And that would have been NPC traders that would allow for the players to purchase unknown crafts, resources, foods, and more throughout their time in the game. And that should sound very familiar to some of you out there, because obviously, this concept would later evolve into what we know as the true shopkeepers that are one of the biggest components of Don't Starve Hamlet. Cool stuff. So we have baby beefs, right folks? Why not baby beefs that are just wet and soggy? Water beefalo babies were once on the table, and by the looks of it, had not only a planned growth cycle, but a shaving system that led to new turf even to boot. And this is intriguing. As water beefalo themselves not only not drop hair at all, folks, they also cannot be shaved to begin with. So I wonder what changed, especially because this was all found during the early Hamlet days, which was well after Shipwrecked had been out. I don't know. Perhaps it was given the fact that Shipwrecked is a tropical place and there's no cold season or temperature to worry about, but I don't know. What I do know is that it did have quotes from every character too. So it was close to being a thing, folks. It was close. However, back to Don't Starve Together for a quick second for a really random one. Icebergs. As within the last two to three months, we have seemingly been a step or two away from having Clay bring ice glaciers to the sea. But please, let's not have that happen. Navigating with our floating wood circles is enough already, and I really don't want to be dodging ice on top of that. Oh, and by the by, someone has actually already added these in the form of a mod, so if you're into that, go check it out. But folks, let us look to wrap up here, because we could easily be here all day with the amount of speculation possible. Especially when there's an absolute crap ton of unimplemented items to be discussed as well. And again, I'll be leaving links to allow you to see all this for yourselves. However, for just a few that stick out to me, there are the gramophone pieces, dried mushrooms, which also happens to be a mod at this point, different jelly beans, buckets, and stem cells, wherever the heck those were meant to be. There is also a huge collection of unimplemented skin concepts for many, if not all, of the original cast of Don't Starve Together that I am sure some of you are just gonna love to sift through yourself. Young Wilson, Robotic Weber, Orphan Willow, Soldier Wolfgang, Young Wickerbottom, which is a sight ya must see, and much more. So, give them a look. And speaking of characters, be sure to not miss out on taking a peek at all the unimplemented characters that are out there. Wilton, Willow, Wallace, Waverly, Watricia, the Pyro from Team Fortress, and more. All of which have various features still found in the files today. Some have sound files that you can listen to yourself even. And some can be seen to have influenced a number of the characters we know and love today. Everything. Be then um implemented features or characters provides a good read. So I suggest you do so one day. And there you have it everyone. Just a little fun look at only a handful of the unimplemented content from Don't Starve, Hamlet, Reign of Giants, 
shipwrecked, and even don't starve together. I hope you enjoyed something a bit different, and that the conversation continues down below. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.